49.7. Hey y'all, Artist Poet Girl here, also known as APG Jamie. And today we're going to do that uh, follow up video for silicone molding or, or making silicone molds. And um, I'll link to the prior silicone mold making videos for your reference and in the description box below I'll probably put a link along with a list of the ingredients uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. so anyway I have cold water and I, like I've explained before I can ex only tell you what works for me okay you find what works best for you and there you go. Um, I use cold water Dawn dish uh, liquid washing um, soaps. Okay, 100% silicone. The brand I use is Red Devil. You want to make sure your hands are very good and soapy when you uh, get your silicone into your cold soapy water. You want to knead it. And that just essentially means fold it with on, uh, within itself and fold it and squish it and fold it and squish it until it gets to, because uh, it's going to start off really soft and it's going to uh, get um, less pliable. And when it stops kind of like melting through your fingers, it's pretty probably pretty much ready to mold, okay? If you have allergy issues, wear rubber gloves. Uh, you should do this in a well-ventilated uh, room to get that airflow going because silicone is stinky stuff, y'all. It's just stinky. So in the prior video, I molded a toy car. In this one, we're going to be molding a pine cone. This is a real pine cone from nature and a real acorn from nature. My acorn did come apart. The cap came off the acorn, but that's okay. I'm still using it, as you can see. So you want to get a glomp, a, a plop of uh, silicone. And you want to form it to the approximate size of the item you're molding. You want to go bigger because once you put your item in there, you want to push it in, but you don't want to push it all the way down because you don't want to put a hole in it. That defeats the purpose, okay, y'all? Okay. So I did the a back of a broken shell, and here's the pine gum. And yes, it's a spiky pine gum. It's got a stick on it. <laughs> it kind of sharp and poked me a little bit, but that's okay. I got over it. All right, so you're going to need to let that set up for a while. Uh, and what's a while? It could be 15 minutes to a couple hours, depending on your humidity and uh, temperature and all that. Before you go to unmold it, if you will touch the mold now that your fingers are dry and not soap anymore, if your finger still sticks to it, don't do it. Leave them alone for a while longer. If your finger doesn't stick to it, then you're probably okay. And see, the shell just pops right off because I didn't even push it down in there. I was just basically going uh, for a texture thing. And as of this video, I still have not used uh, that texture part. So here's the pine cone. I thought, I didn't even know if that was going to work, y'all. Because, you know, it's pretty spiky and, you know, little divots and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, well, if I break the pine cone, then I break it and whatever. There's more pine cones out there in my neighbor's yard, just saying. And look, and it's came out really well. In fact, I was very impressed with how well it came out. Ta-da! Now, there are some, uh, uh, was some loose bits of pine cone in there because, you know, the, the tips of pine, pine cones can be pretty sharp and pointy, y'all, if you've ever stepped on one barefooted. Uh, don't. Um, so, I'm just pulling out some of that excess debris. And here comes my acorn. 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 It's a big one. We get big ones and we get teeny tiny ones. This one's kind of a big one. And uh, like I said, the cap had came off before I molded it, but I popped it on there to mold and it did just fine. It, some of the silicone uh, like squished up underneath the uh, acorn nut and the cap, <coughs> which is perfectly fine. 
because the thing to remember with these molds when you're casting them is is you're going for a surface typically i'm going for a surface anyway not necessary and, and some 3d ish but not necessarily a whole body so see there's some extra goop that's dried silicone set cured silicone um i end up trimming that off because it's not necessary okay i am going to uh try the uh my paper clay first because that's what i, I really wanted to use the paper clay because it's a very lightweight uh medium as opposed to polymer clay it is yes it's lightweight too but the paper clay is like yeah it's like practically holding air in your hand okay right. mm -hmm. so there's some pieces in there i don't think are really necessary i'm not trying to actually get each individual um what are those pine pine doohickeys are called i think they're i think they're seeds y'all i think each little doohickey on a pine cone is a seed so anyway i'm just trimming out some of that excess that i don't think i need now mind you i still don't know if this is going to come out at this point if i told you it does come out would that spoil the surprise well and i'm not going to tell you that so there's the acorn acorn these are the molds that we made from the silicone and it made me so happy y'all i was so happy with how how well they came out so here's my paper clay it's uh my favorite one is the creative paper clay it comes in a black packaging um and i've really only seen it at michael's okay use a coupon all right it lasts a really long time for me it does what i uh do to keep it um damp not wet you know I use a rolled up uh, paper towel, just one or two, and I use distilled water on that because you don't want to promote mold. And I roll that up and put it in my open bag, and then I put my open bag inside a Ziploc bag, and I squish all the air out when I'm storing it. Okay? And it works just fine. So I filled it up with my molds, and I'm going to go ahead and use these store-bought uh, Martha Stewart molds too because I have a future project in mind that I may use them for I don't know I may end up using the pine cone or the acre or both or all of it I just don't know so anyway I my paper clay out I thought well, I'm just going to use this do these two and I, I did dust them uh, with cornstarch that just helps add just a little bit of release I would do the same thing if I was using polymer clay now it was a bright sunny day the day I cast these and I set my little moles out on the edge of the rain barrel in the sun okay in the sun they were out there an hour or two maybe and they, this is how they're just popping out now they are not dry okay and the thicker you item the more not dry they're gonna be so here comes uh, I think that's the acorn and uh, like I said it's I would like it popped out. It's it's fair, it's dry enough to pop out, but as you can see, it's very damp. And if I smush it or poke it or anything like that, it's going to mess it up. Here's the oh, the pine cone came out. Oh, look at that, y'all! I'm really, really happy. And to tell you the truth, I was somewhat surprised how well it came out truly so i got a container with some rice in it and i'm just going to put my things in there and i put them in there uh for on top for a while and flipped them over and all that kind of stuff and now i'm trimming up the um the pine cone and i'm using scissors it cuts fairly easy you do want to be careful because you don't really want to cut off your pine cone seed things doohickeys lollers Okay. That just makes me so stinking happy. I'm so happy with how well it came out. And then a uh, nail file will take off some of those edges. The best when you're filing clay is to file in one direction. Otherwise, it can become uh, somewhat fuzzy. Now, this uh, took a while. This was a process because you got to do your molds. And did I say you definitely want to make sure the items you're going to be molding are very soapy wet as well all right okay okay so 
after after uh, the mold set up and cured, I think I let it set outside over a weekend because they do tend to be tanky for a while. They tanky poo poo, y'all. <laughs> Smell like silicone. It is not silly. And um, after they cured and stopped being so stinky, that's when I did the paper clay, and that probably set. Uh, over a couple nights, weekend, whatever, in the rice. And I'm sending the back smooth-ish because I want the back fairly flat because I'll be gluing these onto book covers or in a book or on a... I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I might be putting them on my next project, okay? No, I don't know yet. <laughs> but I do know I want to paint them. All right, so I'm using my Delusions paints. There is a list of ingredients in the description box below. I even listed the colors of the paint. And um, for you that know about pine cones, they uh, typically are green. The, well, the faster they fall off the tree, the greener they are. And um, because it had been some weeks between the time I'm, I'm painting and molding and all that stuff, uh, the actual pine cone that I used for this has opened up a little bit more because, you know, as they dry out, they open up. That's when they end up dispersing their seeds. And there's the acorn. And the flowers. The flowers end up okay. Not real necessarily happy about the way they paint, but they're okay. I'm really happy with the way the pine cone and the acorn came out. Mm-hmm. And do I show painting the butterfly in this video? I think I do. I think I show painting the butterfly. Hey again, y'all. <laughs> so I used uh, black acrylic paint for the back because that's going to be all that stuff is in the shades and the shadows. And then I went over with uh, a dark green on the pine cone. And as you know, acorn nuts, the actual nut part is a blonde I'm just so happy with how they come out. I think they come out pretty well. They're not exact, but hey, they pretty. You wouldn't, you couldn't tell in a in a distance, okay? Mm -hmm. You just know the back of that one's gone. Back of that pine comes gone. Where's the press at? Mm -hmm. Look at that. I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Originally, this video was like um, long. <laughs> if I said long, would you believe me? It was like a three hour video. <laughs> That's how long it was. Was it? Yeah. All that painting and stuff. And I had a tip on how to change um, your craft knife blade. And I'm gonna put I'm putting that in a separate video all by itself because you know that's totally standalone. So here we go painting the butterfly. Now I I have sped this up considerably, right? Because yeah, you don't want to watch a three-hour video of me just painting the stuffs. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> my butterfly and I did end up using my butterfly on a future project no oh, did I spoil that surprise well just when we get to that part later project just act like you don't know Egan, y'all <laughs> and I'm going on the uh, lines with gold and it kind of it almost reminds me of sort of of a cloisonne butterfly sort of almost maybe could be <laughs> makes me happy all these things made me happy. I'm just, I can't tell you how pleased I am that the pine cone and the acorn came out so well from this silicone mold. Okay? That they, I was able to make the silicone mold with them and cast them and they came out. And that's where my battery on my uh, digital recorder died. <laughs> Any hoots. When I say I can't believe they came out so well, I truly mean I was really surprised how well the molds, uh, the silicone molded around the uh, pine cone and the acorn. Okay? Not so much for these other store-bought silicone molds because that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> 
So now it's uh, getting into the photo montage. <laughs> There's the original pine cone and my rendition of the pine cone. See, they're pretty close. There's the original acorn and my acorn. I'm really stinking happy with these things, y'all. Oh, goodness gracious. So there you go. Will it work with the pine cone? Yes, it will. Will it work with an acorn? Yes, it will. I don't know. That sure leaves it open for a lot more nature stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And happy arting, y'all.